So today we're going to be doing something that you guys have been asking for. The old Silverado 1500. Now, this one is done, and I'll give you a sneak peek. I'm going to take a little time and show you guys how we got to that point. So, stay tuned. about that little guy. Okay, so we went ahead and cut out all the old cross members. Some of these are a little bit more perfectly round than others because we had a little bit of a template to go by with the plasma cutter, but you can see we got all the areas around there cleaned up. So now all we got to do is come in here and get these areas cleaned up a little bit and then we can start putting the new pipes in now unfortunately spare tire usually catches the brunt of the problem it makes the problem even worse and the whole cross member falls out but we got that under control and then the other thing too is if you guys own Silverados like this you see this wire right here that's supposed to go right there that is actually the ground for everything in the rear including a portion of the fuel pump control module as well as all the lighting, the trailer lighting. It usually affects the driver's side rear light when that ground goes. But if you're having an issue with your lights, check that ground because it's most likely rotted. It sits right above the spare tire. So you gotta, if the bed is on, gotta pull the spare tire down so that you can have a look at it. But overall, this frame is pretty decent. So once it's all cleaned up and painted, it'll look a whole lot better. But let's go ahead and get these, uh, these pieces set in here so y'all can see what it looks like with the new pieces in place. Now that we have these in and clamped, we can kind of talk a little bit about positioning. Now, positioning on the cross members on these Silverados is not nearly important as it is on the Jeeps. On the Jeeps, you're relying on the alignment of your safety cap piece to determine your suspension location overall. So you've really got to be careful where you place those. On these, it's not really that big of a deal if they're off a little bit or if they moved a little bit or what have you. The only thing that you really need to be concerned with is that gas tank strap mount is at the same plane or on the same plane as that gas tank strap mount. And you can literally just use your phone with the angle finder or the level, put it flat on the bottom of that guy right there, and then do the same on the bottom of that one right there. And if you're off a little bit, you can literally just grab this whole thing and rotate it before you go ahead and start welding it in. So placement's not a big deal. Safety cap makes this thing super easy too. This side right here is not welded to the tube. So you slide this plate over the tube, slide the tube into the frame, and then dip it down, slide it into that side, and then clamp everything in place. And they give you these nice outside strengthening plates for both front and rear and then we'll be able to reconnect everything. We'll be able to re-weld our spare tire carrier to it to make sure that's all safe and sound again. And oddly enough, the cross member back here is still pretty good. They do make this one as well, but luckily on this one, we didn't have to replace it because it's still solid, which is surprising. They're usually gone. But now what we're gonna do is probably spend the next hour or so just going through this and welding everything up and I uh, can show you guys what it looks like once it's all welded up and then it'll just be painting it, putting it back together, sending it. All right guys, so here we go. Now it is completely burned in on both sides and the one thing you'll notice is there's no weld down here. Now there's a reason I do that. It's because inherently at some point in time between the inside of the frame, the outside of the frame, everything else, there's gonna be moisture that gets in behind this plate and we want that moisture to disappear as fast as possible. So welding on three sides is totally fine, as long as everything is, is pretty stout weld-wise. Leaving the bottom open just allows that moisture that gets inside the frame to get out of there. Because we don't want these two panels rusting against each other because it actually rusts quicker when the two metals are against each other. And you start getting all sorts of wacky stuff that happens. So I tend to leave those out, leave them unwelded, and let the water drain out of there. It's been perfectly strong for 
as many years as I've been doing this, but you can see we did the inside as well. Oh, that's welded up. Same thing goes for the front cross member. We don't weld the bottom of it, but the other three sides are welded. The tube is welded. Now, one thing I need to make you guys aware of, so something that I've made the mistake of a couple of times. Before you start burning these tubes in, make sure that your harnesses are where they need to go, especially this rear one, because I've accidentally letting this harness fall down below and then put the cross member in and then had to basically unrun the harness from all the way back here and get it back over the top of this. Because if it ends up below it, it hits a shock and it does all kinds of crap. And then the ABS sensor, which is right here, doesn't reach to the other side because the harness is too short. And then, you know, your ground wire doesn't reach to where it's supposed to. So just make sure that all your harness is exactly where you need it to be before you go welding these things in because it makes life a whole lot easier. So you notice too, we'll put that exhaust hanger on there make sure that's good that hanger is good that hanger back there is good as well so we are good to go the only thing left on this is to get it primed shoot a coat of paint on it and put it back together so maybe you're curious and maybe you're not but you're probably asking yourself justin can't you do this job with the bed still on the truck and the answer is yes you can do this job with the bed still on the truck however for the extra hour that it takes to get the bed off, it makes everything so much easier to do. There's a lot less headache. You can get up in there with the welder easier. You're not crammed up in the wheel well. You're not trying to weld the tops of these things, you know, right next to the bed. So if you have the means and you're doing this job yourself, I would highly recommend call a few buddies, unbolt the six bolts to take the bed off, get the bed out of the way, and you'll have such an easier time doing this. And plus two, it's gonna allow you to treat the tops of the frame rails with some paint or you know whatever you decide to treat it with but it's going to give you access to the tops of the frame rails so that you can treat those and not have to worry about them rotting out so hope you guys enjoyed that video it was pretty quick one honestly for what it is but there's really not much to these silverados you know we do a ton of these too but i never film them because they're they're really not that difficult to do um and we've done probably 25 or 30 25 hundreds and probably 10 or 15 of these uh, 1500s and now we're starting to see the 07 to 13s so this one happened to be i think it's a 2011 maybe this one is and uh it's the new body style or the new new body style or the new 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 bodies whatever they're calling these things nowadays but we are uh we are officially done with this one as far as the welding goes and fabrication goes shoot some primer shoot some paint be done with it hope you guys enjoyed this video if you got any questions as always throw them down in the comments section and you don't ever hear me say this in my videos, but please, for the love of God, if you're watching the videos, click the subscribe button. 90, what is it? 97% of the views on my channel come from non-subscribers. So if you happen to see this video and you enjoy the rest of the stuff that I do, please just hit the subscribe button. It helps the channel out greatly and I truly appreciate it. And that's probably the last you'll hear that for this year. So have a good night, everybody. I'll see you on the next one, which will be another Jeep frame but it's gonna be like two and a half hours long. So we'll see you on that one. Have a good one.